With health and wellness consumer interest on the rise, would you like to own a vitamin shop location? It seems you'll get that chance soon. I'll get to my thoughts on that introduction a little bit later in the video, but I did want to run through some basics of the 2020 quarter three earnings report and conference call from the Vitamin Shop's parent company, Franchise Group, that was released on November 4th, 2020. For those not aware that the Vitamin Shop is now owned by a holding company named Franchise Group, that transaction officially closed on December 16th, 2019, so they've owned the specialty supplement retailer for almost a full year. This should help with some financial breakdowns in the future because the company will have comparatives and will likely report more information. Until then, the way the franchise group files their earnings report, it doesn't give us much financial details. So this video will be soft on numbers and more focused on the strategic information about the vitamin shop that has become apparent over the last quarter. One metric they do break out is their top line revenue and the vitamin shop did have a great quarter in terms of top line revenue in quarter three of 2020. It was $267 million. That was up 5.5% year over year basis and 12.3% on a quarter over quarter basis. Now, if you're looking at this for the first nine months, the vitamin shops revenue top line is down 3.3% year over year at just over $780 million. They also give us just their operating profit, which they were positive this quarter of $2.8 million. Franchise group did provide some same store comps numbers, which was up 8.6%. And this was based off a pretty weak 2019 quarter three comparative. Same store comps was based off somewhere around like 720 store locations. If you're looking at this from last year's comparative quarter, they had 764 locations. Store optimization plan was supposed to be more aggressive at this point, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic and actually some of the great operating performance of the vitamin shop, a lot of the locations that they highlighted as something that was low profitability or no profitability actually turned into a store that had healthy profits and has been able to extend those locations out a little bit longer in terms of their life cycle. Now, not exactly sure if they're going to be in the long term plan, but there might have been some extensions, uh, short term extensions in terms of their leases. And they also were able to open six locations during the pandemic so far. So they have been highlighting a few locations that they believe are going to be better or some new markets that they could enter because of the softness in the commercial real estate market. Now, just talking around store closures, I want to dive a little bit into GNC, the bankruptcy, and maybe how that affects the vitamin shop. Obviously, with them exiting a good amount of their stores, there is a good bit of supply that is leaving the market, and somebody has to fill that demand that's still there. That demand didn't go away just because there's less supply. Now, the vitamin shop is one of many retailers, both digital and brick and mortar, that is going to fill some of that supply to the demand. Arguably, somebody like Amazon and Walmart and Target, Costco are getting a larger chunk of that than vitamin shop. But in terms of like a apples to apples type of a comparison, the vitamin shop is adding a lot of that supply to the demand that's already there. Now, anytime you have a competitor that is weakening in the market, you really have to go at them in two different ways. One, you go after their customers. So really highlighting them and, and communicating with them constantly to make sure they kind of come into the fold of your retailer. And then secondly, any exclusive vendors or suppliers that your competitor is working with, you should be contacting them and trying to work with them. And I'll talk about that a little bit here in the next section. But it is important to note like in the short term, near term, in terms of like going out of business, liquidation sales for GNC, that does affect a little bit of the vitamin shop locations that are competing in the same market because some of those savvy price sensitive customers are probably gonna go and buy some of that going out of business liquidation uh, goods, merchandising, so that in the short term, we'll have a little bit of pressure on the vitamin shop, but long term, that'll be all flushed out and will help the vitamin shop, especially if GNC is exiting some of those markets that 
the vitamin shop has locations in as well. Now looking at just sports nutrition merchandising, which isn't as big of a category comparative to like GNC, but I did want to note on a few different things because I did attend the APA sports nutrition virtual conference recently and the vitamin shops top merchandiser in that category, Jack Gayton did provide a presentation. I want to go through a few of the highlights that I thought were pretty important. First in terms of like plant-based protein and that being the number one sports nutrition growth category for the vitamin shop right now. I think they're plus 11% this year in terms of that over a plus 6% on animal-based protein. So it's uh, kind of doubling up the growth rate of traditional whey proteins. They're also saying that 59% of these plant-based protein buyers are new buyers to that category. Seems to be some shifting that's happening, um, some protein parity in terms of the search results that are happening where the term whey protein has been down 12% this year, but protein and plant-based protein searches on the vitamin shop have been up. Some other notable categories would be on the go, still doing very well for the vitamin shop. That's up about 10%. They are talking about the energy category of RTD doing much better than the protein RTD. And then different form factors of healthy snacking has been up because of some of like the COVID trends. So you're seeing some of those like low or no sugar kind of candies, um, some of the confectionery products, some of the like chips and savory snacks. Protein has been up across the board as that's a substitute for some of the supply constrictions in terms of just overall food proteins, especially during the early months of the pandemic. Just traditional sports nutrition products have been relatively flat a little bit up. The only real category that he noted that was doing extremely bad was weight management. I think everybody has kind of put on that COVID-15 and it's gonna take a little bit of time for people to get back into that probably. And depending on how things kind of transition with the virus, there might be some added emphasis towards that value proposition during that New Year's resolution, maybe extra than it usually is. Some other kind of categories he noted was nighttime support. So both like craving control and just like sleep relaxation type of products were doing pretty well. He did note that gaming supplements seem to be picking up a little bit, but the jury is still out in terms of how well that's going to do in store at the vitamin shop. Immunity and wellness have been a huge category for the vitamin shop. Um, you're seeing a ton of different products, especially with uh, Dr. Fauci and the Fauci effect talking about vitamin C and vitamin D. Those have been big. And then noted earlier around some of those exclusive GNC brands on the sports nutrition side, Alani New is now being offered at the vitamin shop. They're going to have, I think, a collection of exclusive flavors, uh, some of their top selling SKUs are going to be available, and also Ghost Lifestyles energy products are also being sold at vitamin shop locations. An additional commentary on like merchandising was around the vitamin shop further deepening their branding of their best in class CBD. So CBD HQ, similar to something I've noted before around the keto HQ, even though that's been a little bit soft for the vitamin shop recently in terms of sales, the vitamin shop sees an opportunity to strengthen their position as the leading retailer, national retailer of CBD products. So I think they have around like 20 brands at this point in a ton of different categories from liquid tinctures to capsules, to gummies, to beauty products, beverages, and other topical CBD products. Depending on what happens from a regulatory standpoint, I think the vitamin shop will have an advantage in this product category for quite a bit of time. I want to shift a little bit and talk about the vitamin shop and what they're seeing in terms of like shopping behaviors of their customers, maybe like the COVID-19 effect that's happening in terms of behaviors. They are seeing customers look to trade down a little bit or just like smaller price points, entry points to get them into categories at a little bit lower risk because of the financial constraints that customers are dealing with currently. They're seeing similar trends in terms of basket sizes, frequency of trips that most retailers are seeing. So the average customer spend is up 27%. 
but the frequency of shopping has went down from every 35 days to every 33 days. And they are seeing a growth in the digital side of their sales. It didn't really break out what that was. My thoughts always is if a retailer does not break out that number specifically, it's usually probably below the current rates of other retailers. You call it out if it's great, you kind of bury it if it's below because you don't want any of the analysts or anything to really dock you for being below the industry rates. Vitamin Shop is also saying that sports nutrition, just customers overall are really leaning into health education, health and wellness overall, really trying to do anything they can preventatively to help with the pandemic. Retailers though must adapt to what the customer is looking for during this period of kind of immense change and really be ready to invest where that customer's interests are currently at. This is a perfect time for retailers like the vitamin shop to test and learn and adapt and kind of go through that cycle over and over again to make sure that they are really meeting the customer where and when and how they would like to be. And going into just how maybe Vitamin Shop is doing that, one way is that they are partnering with Instacart. And you might have heard me call for this idea in previous videos about the Vitamin Shop and GNC around just like fulfillment optionality from a customer standpoint, they're really trying to like kind of pick their own adventure shopping right now, customers are. So is that click and collect, both from in-store pickup and from the curbside? Is that subscription-based, just digital peer play? Is that on-demand, same-day delivery? And that's where the Vitamin Shop has been soft at and had not had any partnership, but they did just announce an exclusive partnership with Instacart. I'll add in a video of some previous commentary on the subject matter. What I see both of these retailers, these, you know, Vitamin Shop and GNC, I both, I see them missing out on the fulfillment side of things. So with kind of this world going towards, you know, instant gratification, you know, it's just natural that we also are looking for our shipping windows to be extremely kind of shortened. You know, when you used to get free shipping three to five days, you were happy. Then it was, you know, you needed to have it in two days. Then it was same day. And then now at this point, you know, in most major cities like Austin, Texas, where I'm at, like you could get things within two hours for free, as long as you meet kind of a, an initial kind of threshold or you pay for that shipping option. The instant gratification, people are no longer willing to wait for that product that they buy. And why I think like GNC and Vitamin Shop haven't really focused on like the fulfillment side and shortening that shipping window, that instant gratification, helping the consumer get to that point is that, you know, I think traditionally the, the kind of thought pattern is that Dietary supplements, all those types of categories are not something that people want it right now. They need it right now. And though I think it's not obviously to the point of maybe groceries or some of the uh, fast moving consumer good categories, I think there's like a new norm of what is acceptable for getting products, regardless of what kind of category. If it's just a consumer packaged good, if it's a fast moving consumer good, I think people now just want to have this instant gratification. Uh, and it's a differentiation point where somebody's going to spend their money at. And GNC and, and Vitamin Shop need to try to clear as many of those hurdles as possible to get people to buy from them already. So they need to kind of clear anything that happens with the fulfillment side. And I think that they need to focus on these in 2019. One of the things that I think is important for both GNC and Vitamin Shop to realize is that though like their thought of nutritional supplements and sports nutrition maybe is not in a you know need of fast consumer goods, a lot of their business now is shifting towards functional foods and functional beverages or like the ready to eat, ready to drink categories. A lot of the consumers that are walking in and out of their door or shopping online are buying these products. They're buying a ton of Bang, they're buying a ton of Quest Bar. This is constantly happening. Both Vitamin Shop and GNC are also putting a lot more of their real estate in their store for these categories. So those things are fast moving consumer goods. Those are what you know, we'd be traditionally a, um, a grocery item and a, or, you know, a convenience item. So they need to think about fulfillment in that way. Way they need to think about fulfillment like Walmart's thinking about it or what Amazon's thinking about it or Kroger. They need to be thinking about these in kind of the two new areas, be it on-demand uh, shipping or click and collect. So First one with like on-demand shipping, like two hour windows, that might be the easiest one for both of these to kind of work with. Um, you know, if you partner with like a Postmates or an Instacart or a Shipt, 
uh, they have layers of technology that they add on to the back ends of your systems. Uh, they help you understand you know, the flow of everything. And this will give the ability of people to get products shipped right to their door within two hours. Uh, they already are utilizing those services for their grocery items or some of their mass retailing. So it's an easy add-on for consumers to kind of move in that direction if they are looking to um, you know, get products much quicker. The Vitamin Shop and Instacart partnership just brings another layer of convenience for customers. While like daily vitamins and supplements weren't necessarily considered like a fast moving consumer good that was similar to like grocery item. Because of that, I think a lot of these retailers weren't thinking about grocery e-commerce fulfillment, following the leader there because of that reason. But as like ready to eat, ready to drink and the global health pandemic started to form, I think the shopping behaviors of consumers changed. A lot of those vitamins, minerals, and supplements products were getting added to grocery trips. And I think that opened up the opportunity for somebody like the Vitamin Shop to really see the value in a partnership with Instacart. Now I know I made you guys wait a little bit for my commentary on the introductory statement, but CEO of Franchise Group, which is the holding company that owns the Vitamin Shop has formally come out and said that the Vitamin Shop will be looking to franchise. Now, we don't know if that's gonna be a pure play franchise model or some type of hybrid model where they still own some corporate stores. Currently, the Vitamin Shop is 100% company owned. And I've been mentioning the shift to a franchise model since the announcement of Liberty Tax, which was the franchise group's previous name, I said right off the bat of that acquisition that they would move to a franchise model, as you can see from some of this previous commentary. The assumed reinvention path is to some type of franchise model. Now, is this franchise model gonna be international only? Is this gonna be some blended type of model that GNC has on the domestic front? Or is this going to be all 750 locations are going to change to a franchise model and any international locations that they add? I don't have the answers right now. I am going to prod and hopefully get those answers as quick as possible when I do know how that is going to evolve. But what I'll say is the acquirer, Liberty Tax, or now known as the franchise group, their main strategy, what they've talked about in every press release since they're changing this name to the franchise group is the acquisition of franchise oriented or complementary businesses, including businesses that are not presently subject to franchise agreement. But these acquisitions have the potential of being franchised in the future. So very telling of what the vitamin shop is going to be like. Now, the CEO of the franchise group, Brian Kahn, did mention that the franchise disclosure document will be ready by year end for the vitamin shop. I expected them to have that FDD done by mid 2020, but I think with COVID-19, everything got thrown for a loop and they really needed to kind of dig their heels in and really focus on making sure the business of the vitamin shop was going to be strong. They needed to make the adjustments they needed. They also needed to see what the behavior of consumers were gonna be. Now with people's attention and interest in health and wellness at arguably an all time high, and the vitamin shop's business not necessarily being attached to needing further stimulus on the consumer side, it really sets up like a pretty good opportunity for franchisees to look at the vitamin shop. The only real risk I think is a second shutdown, what that means. Anytime a government is in a position to deem what is essential and what's not, not a good position to be in, especially what we've seen before. You don't wanna be anywhere near businesses that have a chance to not be deemed essential. But we'll end up seeing how the documents kind of play out, what is the excitement of the franchise opportunity for the vitamin shop in terms of the market. I know a lot of the sediment in the industry, I think they have been against the change. A lot of them have been saying if vitamin shop moves to a franchise model, it's going to be the death of them. I don't necessarily subscribe to that. I believe that the portfolio ownership, the leadership team at the franchise group, these are guys that have very strong business acumen in terms of franchise businesses. They know this stuff, they know how to do this. I think there's gonna be a lot of kind of overall portfolio cost savings that they're gonna have. They're gonna be able to really support the business in a different way than their major competitor, GNC. So. 
For me, I think this does have a potential propellant for the Vitamix shot, but obviously a ton of different things could change and it really comes down to the details. And before I end this video, I wanna talk a little bit about maybe potential mergers and acquisitions for just the franchise group as a whole. Now, some of this could potentially benefit the vitamin shop on more of like a corporate level over them adding like a bolt-on asset. But it is important to note that the franchise group did pay down all of the debt um, that was associated with the vitamin shop transaction. So they are having a strengthened balance sheet and they have been talking about possible mergers and acquisitions in 2021. My final thoughts on the vitamin shop is that they've had immense changes over the last one, two years, and it only seems like we're hitting the opening early chapters of the book in terms of what the changes are gonna be for this specialty supplement retailer. With indications of quarter four being strong and 2021 setting up to be pretty interesting, especially with some of the franchise model changes, and then being able to have some pretty low same store comps comparative numbers to be based off of, I think we could be looking at some type of momentum that could put them within striking distance of being the number one pure play specialty supplement retailer in the United States. I know some people are listening to this, I won't say their names, are going to laugh at that. They've already laughed at that, but if you look at both the GNC model and the Vitamin Shop's momentum in their model currently, it's gonna be a lot closer than I think a lot of people are aware of. Until I see a realistic, strategic plan from GNC's new ownership and leadership team, I have to say that my money is going to be on the vitamin shop to continue to gain market share in this specialty category. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you some value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.